Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Well in this episode I'm going to present you with the different methods in the game to um, yeah, provide power to your base. I'm going to start with the early game methods and later on present the end game methods as well. So let's get started into this. The first uh, power generation device you have in the game is the manual generator. This one will only work if you actually have a duplicant running on it. So I'm just gonna place a duplicant here. And as you can see, as he's spinning the reel, the battery is slowly yeah, being charged. Talking about slowly, we only have 400 watts here and Nails has to constantly run on it. He cannot perform any other task. So yeah, this is not a very efficient method to generate power. You should only use that if you don't have anything else available in the game. Because yeah, in the mid and late game duplicant labor will become very important and you want to have that free for uh, building, for digging and so on. So. Don't use the manual generator in mid-game. Moving further on to the wood burner, this is also a device that has to be filled manually. Um, you have to bring in wood from arbor trees in there. As you can see, you some kind of need um, an arbor tree farm, or maybe you have natural access to arbor. Uh, otherwise, you can't get your hands on the wood they provide in the end. And the wood has then to be transported to the wood burner. You can automate that with uh, some kind of shipping or auto sweepers or whatever. But at the time you actually have access to this technology, you are not going to use the wood burner anymore. Let's check the stats here for a second using the help. So we need more than a kilograms of lumber per second. That's quite a lot. Uh, we only receive 300 watts, which is very less, and therefore even <laughs> produce a huge amount of carbon dioxide, 170 grams, and a uh, lot of heat as well. So there is really no big use of that wood burner in the in the game. You should switch to anything else as soon as you can. Okay, moving further to the coal generator. This is still. Uh, a decent device even for mid and late game if you have access to a lot of coal. Uh, and that is because you can also automate the process here for instance with a robo miner. I'm just gonna brush a few coal devices there so you can see how the automation works there. Just place that here in this room and then the robo miner should start mining it and the auto sweeper packs it into this conveyor loader and from the conveyor loader it's going on this conveyor rails and drops right on top of the coal generator and is being picked up by the auto sweeper once there's a requirement for it. This one is already filled. So as you can see you can automate this a bit at least. Um, that's actually making it usable even for late game. Uh, but keep in mind that you can run out of coal and you do need coal for other things in the game as well, such as production of ceramics and refined carbon to actually produce steel. Checking the coal generator stats here, 600 watts of power, it's not bad, it has the same amount of heat produced as for the wood burner, but twice as much power and we have a low amount of 20 grams per second of carbon dioxide so this is pretty much yeah okay you can work with that without having any issues on transporting all the carbon dioxide anywhere one more important thing you should always connect uh, the coal generator to a smart battery therefore the coal generator op only operates uh, when it's receiving a green signal from your smart battery for instance, what you could do is uh, start the coal generator every time uh, the capacity is at 20% stored in that battery and then stop at 80% or something. You can play with the automation of it, but this setting, for instance, could work for your bed as well. Moving further to the next um, power generator, that's going to be the hydrogen generator. 
As the name is already telling you, you do need access to hydrogen, which you usually have a lot of from your electrolyzer setup. And you need a gas pump to actually feed it into the hydrogen generator. I would always recommend using a gas reservoir in between, uh, so you have a little buffer in case you're running out of power or anything. It's basically a second battery to the system. Talking about batteries, I would hook up a smart battery to the hydrogen generator as well. I'm using the same settings here as for the coal generator for instance. You can yeah, play a bit with the automation, so to say, whatever you need in your base. And what will the hydrogen generator actually do? It will provide 800 watts already, that's a decent amount of power. Uh, not so much heat anymore, 4k DTUs compared to the coal generator which was at 9k DTUs for less power. And it will not emit any gases or other liquids. So it's a pretty clean source of energy. Uh, this one could be used in mid game for instance or even in early game when you have access to a vent or something. But I wouldn't recommend using it in end game anymore. That's because hydrogen is going to be a precious resource in the end game. You want to make your liquid hydrogen for your records, rockets from it. So keep something stored for late game. So I would recommend to switch somewhere in mid game. Then we are coming to the petroleum generator, as the name tells, well, tells you already, this one operates from uh, petroleum. You need a liquid pump transporting the petroleum into the generator. Here as well I would recommend to use a reservoir, so have to have some kind of a buffer uh, in case you are running out of power and you might be not able to run your liquid pump anymore in that case. So better to keep something stored. Also I would recommend to hook up a smart battery as well with very li little automation like this 8020 setup again. And for that you are basically going to receive a lot of power, uh, 2 kilowatts that's huge already, but you will also receive a lot of heat, 20 kDTUs and 500 grams of carbon dioxide. That's a huge amount to deal with. That's that's basically telling you <laughs> we are just gonna ignore that someone has died now. This is just a sandbox game. Uh, so you basically need to run a gas pump only to transport the carbon dioxide away. So keep that in mind. It will pollute your entire environment with carbon dioxide very soon. Soon. So I'm basically recommending to place it either right in space where you have a little cooling for it or you place it on top of your slickster stables if you want so you can make use of that carbon dioxide. <laughs> anyway, you will have to deal with the carbon dioxide. What is also nice about this generator is that it does emit some polluted water. How much is it? 750 grams per 2000 grams uh, liquid invested, that's a decent amount. And you will always find uses in your base for polluted water. You can, for instance, use it to feed it to any kind of plants you have, or you can convert it into clean water as well. This will, of course, also work. Uh, one more thing to add for this one, you could also consider feeding ethanol into it. But that one is gonna be the same story like with the wood burner again. Uh, you will need some farms for the arbor trees, um, you will need ethanol distillers and therefore that's kind of a huge effort to be taken. So I would instead always uh, recommend to use petroleum instead. Spe specifically when you have something like a petroleum boiler to your base, uh, you get basically uh, a lot of power from it without uh, having to add any duplicate labor to it. So make sure to always run this from a petroleum boiler, at least if you can. Otherwise you will have to deal with the refinery and therefore require duplicate work and also have some excess gases and so on. So it's just nice to have a clean system with the petroleum boiler. Talking about natural gas, uh, 
There's also a natural gas generator into the game. That's a very decent uh, little machine, so to say. Even in endgame, um, you as as I've already uh, said it by the name, uh, you will need to feed some natural gas into the natural gas generator, and therefore I recommend to have a gas reservoir uh, in between to have an additional buffer. Also, you should hook up a smart battery. You can use the 8020 setting again for automation. And just directly hook it up to your generator as you see. Uh, this one has one advantage over the petroleum boiler. It is that you actually have a gas exit for any carbon dioxide produced, so you don't need to pump everything away with another gas pump. You can, yeah, it has basically, it already has the port attached, so you can make use of that and directly transport it away. So, this is very well suitable for your endgame or any time you have access to natural gas. Um, mostly your natural gas come from any kind of vents or in late game maybe if you have a sour gas boiler or <laughs> even it's sometimes it's it's it might be worth to feed duplicate parts in <laughs> as well so there's always good use for your natural gas generator uh, you will receive 800 watts of power and quite a big amount of heat 10 kdtus uh, for from it and you will also receive some carbon dioxide and as you can see here also some polluted water which is decent again. So make sure to cool this properly, maybe have it into in a some kind of a steam room and feed the steam to your steam turbines or something. So just make sure you have a good cooling system for them. Moving further there's also uh, yeah, renewable energy to uh, oxygen not included that's gonna be the solar panel for that you don't need any automation because you can't really control the power generated uh, by this device it will need to be exposed to light so if you just run it somewhere down in your base it won't uh, provide you with any power but if you for instance have a specific critter called a shine bug on top of it as you can see in the light overlay this one produces light and you can see that the solar panel is now starting to work like 10 watts something as you can see from a few shine bugs this one only provides very limited amount of power so I doubt it is worth to have some kind of stables uh, for shine bugs just for creation of some power uh, instead, I would recommend to uh, plant your solar panels right into space where you have infinite light anyway, at least over the day. And yeah, place, place basically um, a solar panel uh, in width so you pretty much cover every tile you can find, as you can see here. Do something like that, but keep in mind that you will need uh, some access. Uh, for your rockets to leave the planet later on, so this is probably the best use for your con uh, for your solar panels. Also, if you just um, discovered a new asteroid or you're starting to colonize it, this is pretty much free energy you can make use from it. You only need a bit of glass and can build a lot of those to yeah have something like a head start to your new asteroid. Yeah, talking about power, theoretically you would receive 380 watts from it, but that's not ho happening uh, very often because it needs a lot of light to actually produce that power. So instead, um, yeah, hook it up to some to some batteries. Those actually don't need to be uh, smart batteries, and uh, make sure you gather all the power you can get and store it right away for whatever you use. It. So in endgame you will only be able to receive a few kilowatts from it, so you won't be able to run your entire base just from a few solar panels. Keep that in mind. Talking about endgame and the last available power generator to the game, that's gonna be the steam turbine. And as the name says, uh, it will consume hot steam. Uh, the steam has to be above 125 degrees. And yeah, optimal use would be at 200 uh, degrees Celsius. As you can see, it converts the hot steam into water, and you can 
basically emit the water back into the steam room, let it heat up and convert to steam again. So that way the amount of mass inside this room will stay constant and you don't have to feed extra steam into it. Also you could uh, yeah, uh, connect that to a smart battery again depending on, your, on the situation in your base but you don't actually need to because usually you use your steam turbine to just delete the heat and you want it to be constantly running so yeah you, you might have to do some thinking about if you need the automation or not but you can as well use it with the uh, smart battery as well talking about uh, the power again this one would provide 850 watts if the steam has a temperature of 200 degrees or above but keep in mind that 10 percent of the heat sucked from the steam will be emitted at the steam turbine. So if you go above 200 degrees Celsius, it will convert or will transfer more heat to the steam turbine. Therefore, you will not receive any additional power, but you will need extra cooling. So it's pretty much the most efficient way to run them at just 200 degrees Celsius exactly, if you can somehow. Also, you don't have any um, emissions, no carbon, just a bit of feed for KDTUs plus the 10% from the conversion and you will receive, as I've already told you, some water which you can feed back into the steam room. So I think I have covered all the generators uh, out of the vanilla game here. If you have any further questions, please let me know in the com comments below. Otherwise, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and goodbye.